You know, it's almost it's almost funny. We spend so much of our lives as production music composers studying the composition process. We meticulously research sample libraries and headphones and mixing techniques and and we put so much energy into the production process, but at the end of the day, before a music supervisor or a publisher or an editor, before they listen to a note, they read a title. So it's not an overstatement to say that the single most important aspect of our cues are the titles themselves. We're going to talk titles as well as listen to an epic action cue from a member of the 52 Cues community on this week's episode of the 52 Cues podcast. What is happening, everybody? This is Dave Croft, and welcome back to another episode of the 52 Cues podcast. We are so glad to have you back. And if this is your first time, welcome aboard. I'm so glad you found us, however you found us. What is 52 Cues? Well, we are a diverse, interactive community of composers and producers devoted to writing better production music through lifelong learning, mutual support, and encouragement to others along their journey, starting and focusing on writing just one production cue per week. And I would love to have you join us over at 52 Cues. Just go to 52Qs.com and click on the community and you can join us. We have so much happening over there. It is free to join the community. And we also have a lot of other things going on for the friends and family members, the subscribers of the 52 Qs community. We have our first monthly workshop that is tomorrow, April 11th. And if you are watching this from the future, then you can check out those archives. Friends and family members have access to those archives. This is going to be a mixing and mastering workshop where I'm going to be mastering some cues submitted by the 52 Cues community. Also, interactive feedback and critique session on Tuesday for the 52 Cues family, the mastermind meeting on Wednesday. Friends, family, and patrons of the 52 Cues community do have access to the music production live stream. That is Thursday. And then every Monday morning at 6 a.m. Eastern, grab your coffee. Or, you know, if you're across the Atlantic, uh, you can join us in the middle of your day for some off office hours. Those are Zoom office hours where I can answer your questions and uh, or you can just hang out and talk about life or whatever. If you want to skip over today's topic, we're going to be talking all about titles and we are going to be listening to a cue called Legends Never Die by 52 Cues community member Timothy Ackerman. Then click, click the timestamps in the description below. But I absolutely wanted to talk about titles today. Like I said at the beginning, it is not an overstatement to say that titles are perhaps the most important aspect of the the journey of your cue from your studio onto television. Because we have to think how music supervisors or editors, how they how how they interface with our cues. And before they ever click on a cue to listen to it, to see if it's a fit they're going to read a title. And so a music supervisor, as they're collecting cues for a season of TV or a live broadcast, if it's sports, they're, they, they, they get playlists and albums and submissions from their, public, or from their libraries, or they're searching you know, keywords in libraries if they're subscribed to those libraries, and they see a giant list of cues that have matched whatever parameter they're looking uh, looking for or from potential vendors. And so a music supervisor might comb through like a thousand, two thousand, three thousand cues as they are choosing music for a season of Temptation Island, for example, or Big Brother or whatever. And so the music supervisor has the list and they're reading the titles and that title the title has to do some heavy lifting. The title has to communicate the emotion. It has to communicate the vibe, the mood, possibly the genre, potential usage. And it has to catch their eye. It has to stand out. It has to be unique. 
and it has to it has to in just a few words make the music supervisor want to click on it so that they could listen to it and then and then the music really starts to matter but before they listen to a note they're going to read the title and so the music supervisor gathers all of those cues and then says says these are approved for the season or whatever and so ships it off to the editors and then the editor they go through the whole process again now they say all right i need something that sounds like it's a dramedy cue so i type in dramedy in the uh, the mood or the emotion and then they get the list and then they start reading titles again and your title has to catch their eye it has to grab them in just a handful of words. So what I want to talk about today are some of the tips that I've that I've incorporated to create effective titles. And not every single one of my cues adheres to these, but I try. This is this is where I start from, finding good titles that will imply the emotion, the genre, a potential usage. If I can make them chuckle, then that's great. But ultimately, I want them to wonder what this sounds like because I want to hear that cue. And so I'm going to talk about some tips. Uh, and as we go through, I want to give you some examples of some cues that I've written, many of which were written during our music production live streams. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you a title and I want you to, to try to guess what type of cue it is what type of cue it is. So I actually, I want to start, I want to start with one before we unpack any of the rules. This is a cue called sunshine and a picnic. Sunshine and a picnic. Think in your mind, what type of a cue sunshine and a picnic would sound like? Does it sound like this? Did you think ukulele and glockenspiel? That, that bell wasn't part of it. That was actually the 52 Keys community. That was a notification. That sounds like sunshine and a picnic. It paints a picture. There's some sunshine. It sounds childlike, happy. I bet you were wondering, you know what it's really missing? Missing. The only thing that would make this cue sound even better is if Dave, in fact, whistled. Oh, it must be on the next phrase. I was going to time that so perfectly. Anyway, you get the idea. Sunshine and a picnic. Sunshine and a picnic. That's absolutely what that sounds like. I think so. Okay, so now we have to listen to the whistling. Yep. Again, this was a cue written during the uh, music production live stream. All right, so here's another one. This one's called Possum Hunt. Just two words, Possum Hunt. Think about what a possum is large, I think they're, aren't they the member of the rodent family? <laughs> they actually do a lot of good. I know possums aren't the most historically attractive creatures, but uh, they actually do a lot to control like bugs and insects and stuff. So this is possum hunt. How, how is, is this, is this matching your expectations of what a possum hunt would sound like? Some harmonica, some uh, cigar box guitar. So that is possum hunt. All right, so here are some of, of my, my tips. First of all, no more than two to five words, maybe six. 
but just a few short words. And, and there's a couple of reasons for this. First of all, if it's too long, then it's just, it, it, it becomes a mouthful. And as it's being communicated and talked about, and uh, when it starts showing up on playlists and stuff, it's, it's, we, we, it's just too many words. And, and, and just if you really want to get down to it, you don't want your title to, to go off the edge of like a, um, of a spreadsheet cell where the title just goes, you know, sunshine and a picnic and dot, dot, dot. So just a handful of words, just a couple of words, which is a real challenge. Now notice, not just one word. Using one word, that's, that's asking a lot of one word to communicate emotion, genre, usage, and all of that in just one word. My guess is, is that's, uh, th that one word is probably already chosen. And I don't think that is distinctive enough. I shoot for two words. I feel great about three words. Once I start getting into five words, I start getting kind of nervous. But two to three is my sweet spot. With the exception of like sunshine and a picnic is four words, but and a, we have a conjunction and a definite article. Speaking of, I try not to start many cues, especially many cues in the same album with definite, definite articles, because chances are they are going to be sorted. You know, the way these libraries, it's not like, you know, cat burglar isn't the cat burglar. And then I have the possum hunt and the sunshine or it's a sunshine and a picnic. If I have several cues on an album, I'll just have one or two because what I don't want is a whole list of, of cues starting with a uh, or the or an. And I'm definitely not going to do like possum hunt, comma, the. That's not going to happen either. So if I have an album, then maybe one. Like I have one called The Robber Barons. Also on that same album, this is an album, uh, not The Sunshine and a Picnic, but Possum Hunt and this cue called Robber Barons. This was all part of like an epic Americana cue. They wanted Americana, but epic intention. So that one's called The Robber Barons. I could have just called it Robber Barons, but I went with The Robber Barons. All right, so two to five words, avoid just one word, and no brand names and no trademarks. Right? So don't say my old converse. Instead, my old my old sneakers. You know, or if it's uh you don't say like Nike's and the hardwood. You know, if it was a basketball cue or something like that. You might say sneakers and the hardwood. But your cue in just those two to five words has to imply either the emotion, the genre, or the potential usage. And how you do that without actually saying and trying not to say the actual emotion, the actual genre, or the actual usage. I know. I hear you. I'm hearing you. So even though it might be a dramedy hip-hop cue, you don't want to say dramedy hip hop in the album or in the in the title you don't want to say tension hip hop or if it's uh, like old school you don't want to say old school necessarily so let, let's 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 do one here's a cue called some enchanted sneaking some enchanted sneaking, which is a pun, and I'll talk about puns here in just a second. Some enchanted sneaking. What do you think that sounds like? Was it this?
think. Now, this one's a really interesting cue in that it started out as pretty, like just a, a regular dramedy cue. But I noticed as I was writing it, the cue just started kind of leaning into this almost magical, fantastical fantasy element to it. And it kind of carried it. And I was really worried because as I was, you know, putting it together for a dramedy album, I thought, well, it sounds magical. There's like, there's this kind of magical element to it. And how, how is it going to fit? And I solved the problem by using a title which managed those expectations. Which, as soon as the music supervisor read that title, they knew with the word enchanted that there was probably a fantastical element to it. And so managing the expectations, even if that wasn't necessarily part of the game plan on the outset, and I think that's okay. I had a lesson with a student just this week, and they were writing a cue that started leaning towards, uh, I don't know, it just kind of sounded like Halloween music. I think some of the, the melodic choices and some of the instrumentation, instrumentation choices just, it just, I don't know, it just reminded me of Halloween and like Monster Mash and, and funny kind of, because I think it was, a, I think it was a dramedy cue, you know, and so like funny ghosts and those kind of things. And, and I told him that could be a problem because you might not necessarily, they might not necessarily have asked for a Halloween cue, but if you can imply a Halloween usage in the title, then before they ever click on it, they know what to expect. They absolutely know what to expect before they even listen to a note which means you can also tag it with metadata and keywords as Halloween or spooky or, you know, spooky dramedy. And those kind of cues get used every single year. So just lean into it. So some enchanted sneaking. I felt like, hey, this cue isn't necessarily going to fit on this dramedy album. But if I say, hey, it's not an error, it's a feature I meant to make a magical dramedy cue and then some enchanted sneaking is born. I mentioned Halloween. This especially works for Christmas cues. Here's another cue. This one's called Who Spiked the Eggnog? Who Spiked the Eggnog? What type of cue do you think that do you think that probably is? What type of cue is that? If you guessed Christmas something, you're absolutely right. And what's Christmas without a few sleigh bells? And so by saying eggnog, which isn't, I don't think, that's not automatically Christmas, just like sleigh bells aren't automatically Christmas, but they've been, I guess they've been co-opted by a big Christmas or something, I don't know. But you just can't, you can't remove sleigh bells from Christmas. You can't remove eggnog from holiday time. So, by having a cue called Who Spiked the Eggnog, I have this hip-hop dramedy cue. And so, Eggnog connects the sleigh bells. By the way, this also works for other cues. Here's another cue. This one's called March of the Toy Soldiers. March of the Toy Soldiers. You probably, since we're, I mean, I just mentioned it's a holiday cue, it's a Christmas cue. And this absolutely got used on the NFL on CBS. So this is doing a couple of things by calling it March of the Toy, not soldiers, but soldiers, as in soldier boy, right? That brings and implies hip hop. And so when when music supervisor or ed editors are reading that and they see March of the Toy Soldiers, 
they know that there is probably a hip hop element to it. Also, with March of the of the toy, that's March of the of the Tin Soldiers or uh, Nutcracker March. This is from the Nutcracker, and I actually have two other big epic orchestral hip hop cues. One is called Carol of the Crunk, and the other one is called Dab of the Sugar Plum Fairies, and those get used every single year on CBS's NFL coverage. This one got used this past year. And so obviously Carol of the Crunk, right? That's that's such a stupid title, but it's it's that word that is associated with that genre, with that style. And so it gets used. Which leads me to which leads me to um, one of the other elements that I try to incorporate in my titles, which are puns or turns of phrases. So March of the Toy Soldiers instead of March of the Toy Soldiers. Imply, there's, there's just a turn of phrase there. And if you can make a pun out of it, then that will absolutely get somebody's attention. Here's another one. This is called Drone with the Wind. Drone with the wind. Now, the word drone, that's a play on the phrase gone with the wind, the movie title, right? And the word drone and gone doesn't rhyme, but when you look at it, it's like a visual rhyme. And I'm pretty sure there's a word for that, words that look like they rhyme. So drone and gone. So when you see drone with the wind, what what type of cue do you think it is? Now, focus on the word drone. The word drone. Drone. Was it something like this? A dark, ominous drone cue? And specifically, this uses wind because there are flute samples, and this the pad that you're hearing right now was created. This is another live stream cue that we wrote together during the music production live stream. And uh, I recorded uh, Shakuhachi here and brought it into Omnisphere and made my own drone pad out of it. Again, this was uh, written over a couple of live streams available for our uh, friends, family, and patrons. And so Drone with the Wind, when you see that in a list, it kind of stands out. And if you want to know who is the king of uh, pun titles, and that is uh, Michael Giacchino. Michael Giacchino's title game is absolutely on point. I bow, bow to my sensei. He is absolutely on top of the game as far as, as far as puns go. Thing I love to do in my cues is I love to use uh, alliteration. I love to use uh, phrases that, uh, for lack of a better term, are kind of fun to say, just fun to say. And so having repeated syllables, repeated or consonants and alliteration, I think wor- works really well. Here's one called grits and gumbo. Using gumbo to imply this almost New Orleans, New Orleans swing type thing. Here's one called a Rock Fist Freeway. So Rock Fist, Rock Freeway, Rock Fist Freeway. Right? 
uh, hijinks and heists. Again, I'm, I'm playing these in the hopes that you will think what type of cue. What type of cue do you think hijinks and heists sounds like? Was it this? Was it was it kind of a a, a, a dramedy heist type? I, ho I hope so. That was that was the plan at least. All right, so puns work really well. Alliteration works really well. Or finding something that that really communicates, especially for like trailer cues and for like uplifting cues, or even investigation investigation cues. Uh, here is uh, here's one called roulette of suspicion. I like the word roulette and the word suspicion. And this one uh, specifically, another live stream cue where we, we played Omnisphere Roulette and just chose, chose sounds at random. Here's one called All the Pieces Fit. Another intrigue tension cue. What about a cue called uh, Return of the Fallen? What type of cue would you say Return of the Fallen sounds like? If you guessed emotional cue, you're on point. But if you also guessed kind of emotional, dramatic trailer cue, you would be right as well. Here comes the trailer part of it. Right, so this kind of uplifting, emotional. All right, so 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 let, let's 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 kind of bring all of this together. A couple of words, two to five words, using a title that uh, communicates emotion, genre, potential usage in the cue, without actually saying the specific emotions, the specific genres, or the actual emotion or uh, usage rather. Using puns alliteration, common phrases that, that you can change a word that can imply the usage and also kind of wink, uh, wink, give, give a little chuckle to your supervisor. I think that really works well. Uh, no one words, no brand names, no trademarks, and uh, don't, don't be generic. Don't be too generic. And this falls in line with like saying investigative tension cue. Okay, well, there are a million other ways to say investigation. There are a mil million other ways to say tension cues. You know, if, if you are working on albums, if you're, if you're putting together a whole, a whole list of cues that are all going to be, let's say, crime dramas, for crime dramas, or cerebral dr dramedy, or maybe it's, uh, maybe it's putting the pieces together of, of an investigation. So a cue like puzzle and a paradox or focus on the fingerprints. All right, so here's puzzle and a paradox, which has the, the alliteration. And focus on the fingerprints, which has the alliteration and also is a play on the, on the phrase focus on the family. Okay. 
By the way, these are all in the same album, the same with uh, All the Pieces Fit. That album also has in, uh, incision, indecision in it. Let's see, what are some of, some of the other tracks on this? This is, a, this is kind of an intrigue tension cue, uh, tension album. Line of Questioning, Deciphering the Cipher, Smoke and Mirrors, uh, Cycle of Intrigue, Cat Burglar. These are all tension-y type of, of, of titles. You can drill down even further Let's say you were writing cues for courtroom dramas. So it might be jury of peers. It might be witness intimidation. It might be take the stand, plead the fifth. Like finding these phrases, which are really common in, in uh, like with law, with finding law phrases or finding golf phrases or finding football phrases, but not so drilled down to where it's not really usable. So here are, here are some things that I got into trouble a little early on, and the first was my t- my titles were all really really too long. They were just I was like trying to tell like a whole story, and uh, I'm I'm actually trying to find some of those, and uh, I can't. Uh, I was as we were talking, I was trying to find some of those up, but I couldn't. Let's see if I can go some of my early ones. Uh, that is not the right playlist. Uh, by the way, I have a, a whole SoundCloud playlist that I keep up of all of my cues. And I encourage you to do the same thing just to keep track of some of your, some of your cues. The first one that I ever got air with was called Sunrise on the Green. And that's, that's a good, that's a good title. Um, 40 Yard Juke got lots of play. Drive the Pile got lots of play. Hit Me Up Bro, Come At Me Bro. Those got titles. You know, I'm not finding the titles because they all got they all got changed. The one that got uh, like a bouse got a lot of air. Uh, Tightrope tautology. I like that title, but uh, but uh, I think that's gotten air. Uh, go harder, go home. My favorite title. My favorite title of all time. Stalker Texas Strangler. Stalker Texas Strangler. I'm really proud of that title. That's another one that looks like a pun, but Walker Texas Rang- Ranger, Stalker Texas Strangler. I'm really, really proud of I'm proud of that one. But what about you? How are your titles? What type of effort and energy do you put into your titles? I would love to hear some of your strategies in the comments below. Please let me know. Want to definitely hear from you. I read all of the comments and make every effort to respond to them. So speaking of titles, let's change gears and let's take a listen to Legends Never Die. This is by 52Q's community member, Timothy Ackerman. We're going to take a listen to it and then talk about it on the other side.
That was Legends Never Die by Timothy Ackerman. Timothy, thank you so much for sending that our way. Really, really happy to have you on board over at 52 Qs. I really enjoyed this, and it, I, I liked the slow build of it, but I feel like it's kind of straddling two lines between being uh, kind of an action production cue versus a trailer cue. And trailer cues, I'm sure I've talked about this uh, on, the, on the channel before, trailer cues play by a few different rules. Uh, if this were a trailer cue, then we would want to make sure that we have really clear three, three act structures. And, uh, and I feel like we kind of have that happening. Uh, with, with Act 1 being from the beginning up until about, you know, four, 49 or so when the percussion comes in. But then it feels kind of like a slow build up through it. And if this were a trailer cue, I think we would definitely need some edit points, some spots where the energy pulls back and then shoots forward. And I would look to add an edit point blam like right here this is about the minute 48 second uh and you can do some like i i don't know what as i was listening i kept hearing like some stutters some you know these kind of uh, 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 these kind of stutter edits uh that could have been that could have been really really effective uh or a, a sub drop boom, and then blam and then really then, then bring another gear up but i felt like we had a really good gradation of energy from the beginning, the intro, into around 48 seconds, but I didn't feel a real clear Act 3 boost of energy. Instead, it felt kind of like a slow build. And uh, that's where those edit points will really, really help. I mean, I can see you are absolutely doing what you need to do in terms of every few phrases or every phrase kind of building on top of it. I liked how you pulled the energy back at the end of act one. I think that was, that's what makes it feel firmly trailery, in which case we need those edit points. A music supervisor or an editor is going to look at your waveform and they're going to they're going to keep an eye out for where those points are that they can either, you know, grab the end of the cue and stick it on or they can make a cut and stretch out and add a little dialogue blip or whatever. And so I think we definitely would want to give them edit points if this were a trailer cue. Now, if we wanted to be more in production music land, again, these are just my opinions, all right? So there are so many different ways to do this. But if we were in production music land, what I would look for is a breakdown where we're pushing energy forward. You know, I think, I think we're in good shape up through here. And then, then build it through here. And then I would actually pull the energy back and go to maybe stall out the harmony so where you don't have the uh, the ascending root movement, but uh, maybe just hold the harmony, pull the energy back. This works really well for production music cues because it gives editors more options because they're laying it underneath a scene, not necessarily to trailer clips, which are all about like completely just goosing energy, energy, energy the whole time. And so a trailer cue, for the most part, you're not going to want to pull energy back in the middle of the cue, in which case we need those edit points. But if this were a production music cue, then I think we should pull the energy back, go into a breakdown here. I do like how you, you switched up the, the harmonies there. I like that we were using some alternate root movements. I think that really, really helps, helps it not sound too repetitive. So well done. And then when you come out of this, maybe two phrases down. And then rubber, back, rubber band back into big hits. So I would probably stay all stay down all through here. Again, it's 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 really funny. You kind of push forward, pull back, just to push forward again. 
And I know libraries, which every single, they might have 30, I think they have about 30 or 35,000 cues in their library, in their entire catalog, and every single cue adheres to this identical structure. In fact, it's contractual. When you sign up for that library, you are agreeing to providing every single cue in their 35,000 tracks, however many tra tracks they have. You're, 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 you're agreeing to providing this structure. And then really smash it home here. I feel like we also, we also could have done some, uh, some additional octave layering up in the brass. I loved, I love the, the halftime groove. Then before, oh, let me, my camera, so I'm moving around too much. My camera blurred out. And then before you hit this downbeat, then, so some big hits, if it's a trailer. If this is a production cue, maybe not. But if this is a trailer cue, actually hit those. Zhoom, zhoom, zhoom. Those are solid edit points. And then you hit. Bom, right? Hit the, hit the Brahms, then hit it again. So Brahm, Brahm, and then octave lower. Brahm, right? So you're adding a zoom, 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 zoom five, three, however many you want to hit. And then Brahms release, Brahms release, Brahms, and then really hit hit it big and, and hard there at the end. Um, the only thing I would say about your mix is the strings. There's something a little phasey about the strings. I don't know. They feel weird, like, like they, they feel like they're coming from behind my head, like right, right here. If you're looking at the YouTube video, just floating around somewhere there, which is a little weird because they're the, 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 they're the celli and celli would be stage or uh, stage left or conductors right. And that feels a little... There's something phasey and weird, mono-y, I don't know, happening with your strings. I would absolutely revisit those. But there, there's something a, a little weird going on there, so I would, I would check that out. But Timothy, thank you so much for sending this along. This was, uh, this was submitted into our week 13 search. And uh, thank you so much. And you can see he got he got tons of feedback already on that. Uh, even uh, another composer uh, came in and uh, dropped another video. This uh, uh, suggestions for him. This is absolutely and one hundred percent what the Fifty Two Cues community is all about, which is composers helping composers, everybody coming together, submitting their cues, uh, giving ideas, receiving ideas, giving feedback, leaving feedback. It's absolutely what the that uh, what the community is about, and I hope I hope you join us over at Fifty Two Cues dot com. Like I mentioned at the beginning, it's free to be a member. Uh, Timothy, he didn't pay to do that. Uh, you don't have to pay to access the community. Come on in, learn about production music, post up your cue for feedback, leave feedback, receive feedback. We hope to join you. Uh, or we hope that you can join us. Now, we have other things that are available, other tiers starting at just $14 a month that gives you access to our music production live streams as well as our monthly workshops. We also have another tier above that, $39 a month gets you all of that plus interactive weekly feedback where I give feedback on your cues and it's live. You can ask questions about that and, and I hope that you can join us. Now, our mastermind for spring 2022 is full, so we're no longer taking, uh, taking uh, registrations for that. The next mastermind will be starting July 11th, I believe is the date on that. And so if you want to learn more about that, or if you want to get put on the wait list to join us for the mastermind group, which is intense, 
uh, weekly accountability and mentoring with a group of like-minded composers, then head over to 52Qs.com and make sure to sign up for our newsletter. So this Q, or our, um, 52 Qs isn't corporately sponsored. We are completely supported by viewers and listeners and members of the community just like you. So I want to give a special word of thanks to the patrons and the friends and family of, of 52 Qs. You can learn all uh, all about all about that by heading over to 52Qs.com or going to patreon.com slash Dave Croft. But that's going to do it for me this week. I, I hope you had a great week 13, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Until next time, peace. The 52 Cues podcast is copyright 2022, Dave Croft, all rights reserved. The music played on the podcast is copyright of their respective owners and is used for educational purposes only. For more information, including joining the 52 Cues community and submitting your cue for consideration on the podcast, head over to 52Cues.com. 